from Los Angeles. It's the Tom Likas Show. Excellent. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Brian writes into the Tom Likas show. He says, hello, Tom. I've been dealing with this situation at work that I thought you might find interesting. My department has decided to adopt a family for the holidays. Where each associate gives money towards buying gifts for a poor family. I thought it might sound like a good idea. Until I heard a profile of the family. They are a working couple with four children. With one child only seven months old. When asked why I didn't want to participate, I told them that I didn't feel inclined to help a family that Keeps having children they couldn't afford. These people were just as poor when they had two kids, and now they have four, and I'm supposed to pick up the slack? I jokingly said I'll be happy to pay for some birth control. But no one around here seemed to find that funny. What do you think, Tom? Am I breaking up a valid point? Thanks, Brian. Well, I hate to disagree with all your co-workers there, Brian, but uh, I think you are bringing up a valid point. It's time we start expecting more from people. It's time we start expecting people to, uh, to be responsible. And part of being responsible means not having any more children than you can afford. Period. It does not make any sense for us to be encouraging people to do irresponsible things like having children that they cannot afford. And by giving charity to people who do stupid things, you're only encouraging them to continue doing stupid things and to encourage other people to do stupid things. Does that mean I don't believe in being charitable? Absolutely not. I would give money to a family where... Dad lost his job. Dad was uh, killed on 9-11. I give money to a family where somebody suddenly found they had a brain tumor. Sure. But an intact family where they just keep popping out kids and uh, there's no concern about whether they can afford to continue having children? Absolutely not. And on top of that, as I've said in this program, I would not give it to a single mother either. I would go so far as to encourage you, if they're pressuring you in your office during the holiday season, to contribute to to a charitable venture that would help people. Uh, Make sure you find out who the people are. And if that includes single mothers or people who just continue to pop out children wantonly, say no. Now, a number of you are saying, bah humbug. You think I'm being unreasonable about this? I don't think I am. Let's find out what you think. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Can I tell you a joke? Okay. What's the best part about a Hummer? I don't know. 10 to 15 minutes of silence, buddy. The Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Susie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Just wanted to agree with you. Really? Can't afford a problem? Shouldn't have them. I only have one. I don't want to have any more. 
And uh, I certainly am not going to contribute to a charity that would uh, facilitate people having kids they can't afford to have. That's why I hate the welfare program. <laughs> you have to give to those people that, you know, open their legs. Well, I think we, I think we need to have a welfare program. There are people... You know what? They take advantage of it, though. Well, those who take advantage of it should be in prison, okay? But... But there are people who get into situations, their husbands leave them for the receptionist, uh, right. uh, husband is sick or dies, can't pay the bills. These things happen, and we do need to have a welfare system for that. Uh, I don't believe we need to have a system that encourages people to crank out kids. We need to have a system that rewards people for not having kids. Exactly. And unfortunately, exactly. Americans are so backwards when it comes to this. We give people tax exemptions and tax breaks for having more children. We should yeah. be giving them tax breaks for having less children. There you go. <laughs> I agree. I, like I said, I only have one, and my husband and I are just like, we're not having any more. It's, good for that's you. That's it. Very good. So, just wanted to let you know. Well, thank you, Susie. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, you are the man. I'm so glad I got through. I've never got through before. Here we are. Well, I live in Anaheim, California, right next to Disneyland, mm -hmm. the uh, happiest place on earth. Yeah. And I live right across the street from there in a real nice condo complex. And right across the street, there's some lower-end uh, apartments. And it's just full of Hispanic people. And... I mean, we're talking about two, three families living in one house that they take turns living in the house, you know, throughout the day. And these same ladies, um, while their husbands are out behind for somebody to roll up with a moving truck to pick them up to, to help them move, to move and, you know, give them work, they're pushing a cart down the street with about six kids following them, you know, half in diapers, you know, half of the other ones. The other ones are pushing the other ones in the strollers. And I mean, I'm 19 years old. I make a I make a real good income, and uh, you know, all because of I'm in the mortgage business. And you know, in sixth grade, I went to a school here. I moved here from Fort, and they tried giving me. I'm I'm as white as they come. I mean, I'm total white boy. They tried giving me a Spanish math book and telling me that the numbers are the same. What does it matter? Huh. I mean, come on! It's affecting our society that bad that people can't control how many kids they pop out, it's affecting everybody else who's a hard-working person trying to send their kids and get a decent education. I mean, we had kids in our class that didn't even speak a word of English. Our teachers didn't speak a word of Spanish. I mean, come on here. Where are they going to draw the line? You know what I mean? Well, you know, again, I, I understand what you're talking about. It's a generalization, of course. Everybody's not like that. Oh, uh, no, very big generalization, but that's what I see where I live. And that's the problem with people having kids. I, I don't care what color they are. I mean, oh, we, no. we talked to these chicks in Seattle who are Caucasian doing the same thing, having kids they can't afford to have. And I, I think when, you're, uh, when your boss comes to you with a charity at holiday time that involves supporting people who crank out more kids they can have than they can afford to have, just say no. No. Just like crack cocaine, crack kills, just say no. Just say no, baby. 1-800-5800-TOM. He's our telephone number. It's Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? All right, Kevin. Hey, listen, uh, I, I really have to agree with you. I'm calling from Canada, mm -hmm. and you have the same problem up here. Yeah. People just can't keep their legs closed. They just pump them out. I mean, they you don't even have to keep your legs closed. Just get some goddamn birth control. What are you doing? Exactly. But, you know, then they... Open your legs and put a condom in there. Yep, pretty much. You know, and then I, I just don't understand. I work hard for my money, and why should I give it to somebody who can't control it? Well, I, I agree with you. It's Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, how's it going, Tom? All right, Alex. Hey, how's it going? Great. Yeah, I just wanted to call and agree, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's true. I mean, I've lived all over this country. You know, I mean, I was, I'm originally from New York, and it's like, you know, the, prob the problem is countrywide. And it really, it really is becoming an epidemic because... A, with populations increasing the way it is, and B, with rewards for increasing the population, I mean, it's just going to basically destroy the entire areas. Well, I certainly don't think we should be helping people who do this. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. We should all just say no. Absolutely. And I think, uh, I mean, obviously I'm on air, so you can quote me or not, but um, I believe it's uh, Hong Kong that actually has a policy that you can have two children and no more. Well, that's mainland China, actually. Mainland China, okay. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, I think a policy like that instated here 
would definitely be effective. Well, uh, one p effective policy would be to stop rewarding people who have children they can't afford to have. Absolutely. And that means not giving them charity, uh, not uh, 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 making it easy for them, not giving people deductions uh, or exemptions for having children, earned income tax credits, uh, uh, child education credits. It's time to start giving people credit for being responsible, for, for having less children. Give them credit. Absolutely agree with you, Tom. All right, Alex. Thanks, man. Thank you, David, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I'm up in Seattle here, and I got involved in a program for helping out a family, for adopt a family with an ex of mine probably about five, six years ago. And the reason that I won't donate to these things anymore is when we finally showed up, she had gathered money from about 20 people at her work, she threw in about 50 bucks. I threw in over 100. I show up with her and our two kids, and they already had more presents under their tree than we did. She said she was a single mom with four kids. Her, her supposed ex-husband was there, and they had signed up for three adoptive families and hit on all of them. And we showed up with turkey dinner and all the fixings and they were saying, well, we already got that, we already got that, you know, thanks and everything. And it was it was a huge turnoff because they signed up for everything, and here we are, two people working hard, making good money, and they got more than we did. Yeah, yeah. And well, I, I think that people, instead of just pouring money into charities, really ought to investigate who's getting the money. Well, and that's the thing, and, and you know, I tried to think of it early on that, you know, maybe... Uh, they signed up for one one year and didn't get anything, so they decided to sign up for everything. Mm -hmm. But they left us with nowhere else to take the stuff, so we just had to leave it. Yeah. And and I'm look, I, we get home and I'm looking at all of our things. And I'm going, you know, I could have spent the money on my own kids. I could have gone down to some shelter for the homeless with my hundred bucks. And in, but once they hit on all three, they knew weeks ahead of time, and they could have said no, we're okay, but they didn't. Right. And that was really frustrating. So you and will never help an adopt a family uh, family again. No, and they've got stockings hanging up at work. I just got another email about adopting a family, and they're doing all this stuff. And you know, I just I can't bring myself to do it because I've got my own to take care of, and. So that's what I just decided to do. And, you know, it's the problem is is when there's people out there who do these things, and I tell people about it, what they end up doing is ruining it for some people who might really, really need the help. Uh -huh. But people are greedy. People are people. And I can't change that, so I just take care of my own. And I'm sorry I have to do that, but how many times do you have to get burned before you wake up? David, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, what's up, Tom? Uh, not much, Nick. Right on. I'm, I totally agree with what you're saying. I mean, we shouldn't be giving these people benefits by all means. But um, if you went and took those away, uh, what, what, where would that leave them? I mean, we're going to have, what, kids running rampant around the streets and dirty as hell or whatever, you know? I mean... What, 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 well, I didn't suggest taking away welfare. I, I never suggested that. But I'm certainly not going to give charitable donations to irresponsible people. Definitely. I, I agree with And you. somebody who, like, like the letter writer Brian says, uh, somebody who has four children, and the youngest is seven months, and, and they're on, you know, on, a, on a charity uh, they, they're trying to get money. You know what? You had too many kids. Oh, yeah, and, and people shouldn't think, well, we can have kids, and somehow uh, people will, will pay the difference. It's outrageous. Right, right. But I think if, if you took that away, still, I think people would keep doing it. I, I think it has a lot to do with other things, too, just irresponsibility. I'm not, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, you know what? I, I think that people would have kids, uh, if they knew there was nowhere to go, I think they would at some point learn. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know what else to say, I guess. Much I mean, what we really ought to do that we will never do is to say that uh, if you can't afford to raise a child right, it's child abuse, and that, that child will be taken out of your home. 
Right. And that would certainly discourage people from having more and more children if they were going to continue to be taken away from your from from your home. Definitely, definitely. That's that's a good point. That's a very valid point you just made right there. Right. Um, I don't know. Well, uh, blow me up, I guess. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Jesse on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jesse. It's nice to finally talk to you. I know. I'm so happy to talk to you. Anyway, I want to tell you, I want to comment. Maybe this is an issue, a separate issue, but what bothers me is I know a certain person that um, gets, I don't know if you've heard about this um, money that they get for babysitting money for because you're low income or whatever, and they give you like $2,000 a month or whatever, and you have to pay the sitter. 2000 a month? Yeah. This is what this lady was getting. She was getting $2,000 a month to give to whoever was taking care of her kids. Wow. And here she claimed that, you know, that she wasn't, she was, um, what, what is it, single mother, and here she was living with her boyfriend. They're not married, and of course she's smart enough not to get married because she knows that, you know, she's going to get in trouble, uh-huh. she's going to get caught easier. And here, I'm, I'm, I, it pisses me off because it's, you know, language, it's because I'm working my ass off with my, you know, my husband and I and everything, and then here's this girl just, you know, I'm paying a lot of money from my own pocket for my babysitting for my own kids, and here she just get, calls this number, whoever, and qualifies for, you know, her babysitting for her two kids, which she already has two kids from another guy. And it's, it's frustrating, you know, and I can't do anything about it, but it just gets me so mad that they try to say that they're so broke and this and that. It's like, well, then, you know, stop having your kids, especially from so many different guys, you know? Exactly. I, I don't understand that mentality at all. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? These are women who are idiots. That's that's what it boils down. I think so. I mean, I I have two kids of my own, and I have them five years apart, and I thought about it very, very carefully about having the other one, and I just think... You know, we make pretty good money. I mean, we're not, like, all there, but, you know, we make pretty good money, and we want to have our kids with not everything because you don't want to spoil them, but, you know, you don't want to leave them without, like, you know, things. Like, some people say, oh, when I grew up, I didn't have this. I, didn't have... I mean, it's bad, you know? Yeah, why do you need why? to repeat that mistake? Yeah, I don't want to repeat that, you know, with my kids. So it's like, no, I'll just try to give them as much as I can. You know, I'm not going to spoil them, but I try to make them happy, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, uh, you uh, you make very good points, Jesse. I thank you, Catherine, on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, nice Catherine. To, nice to talk to you. It is. I just want to say that I totally agree with you. I am a married woman, ten years. Um, me and my husband, we decided to have the one child, and we don't want any more. We want to be able to provide a good life for her, and we're doing that, putting away money for her education. But it boils down to is we like things too. And the more kids you have, the more you take away from your household. Uh-huh. And we're not going to do that. Good for you. Yeah, and people out here, they're ridiculous. I have two nephews having kids back-to-back, and I tell them, you guys need to listen to Tom Likas and get your act together. That's right. And um, they're, they're just, like you say, they're pussy-whipped over these girls, and they're mm-hmm. stupid. They're absolutely stupid, and I hope they're listening, and keep giving the good advice. Thanks, Tom, for taking my call. All right, Catherine. Thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're talking about the email from a listener named Brian who wrote in about a situation at work. His department has decided to adopt a family for the holidays. Everybody would give money towards buying gifts for a poor family. Then he found out the family was a working couple with four kids. One child's only seven months old. He says, I don't want to contribute to something like that. I agree with it. What do you think? It's the Tom Likas Show. I know, I just said that. Right on? Yeah. Uh, hey, I work for the telephone company, Tom, um, and uh, I, you just kind of hit a nerve when you're talking about these charities things. Uh, people who uh, are on welfare can actually get a um, telephone for cheaper than uh, just a regular person can. Right. Well, and not only that, but we get dinged on our phone bill for that. Uh, it's listed right on the bill that there's a tax taken out of everybody's uh, phone bill to pay for that. Well, I didn't know that that was what that was for. Yeah. Because I, I, I just thought that this had just been imp- implemented in like the last six months. This is the first time we've actually been... Well, I know here in California we've had that for years. It's called Life lifeline service and it's listed right on our phone bill here it's called uh that's called um soft dial tone but um what we do what we're actually doing is put in regular telephone service for people that pay like nine bucks a month for it right they can get any services that they want and you see struggling moms that are actually out there who who, you know have a have a job um a, a couple of kids who aren't on welfare and are actually trying to work through things and uh 
you know, they got to pay for a regular telephone just because they're not on welfare. And, mm-hmm. you know, regular telephone, $31 a month. If they, you know, if they can't afford it, they, they just can't get it. Uh-huh. You know, I don't understand uh, why we're paying for stuff like that. Well, I, you know, again, I agree with you. We just simply encourage people to be irresponsible. And I think right. we should be providing incentives to be responsible. Right. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, I, I don't even contribute to uh, any kind of charity at all. And, and I wish people would look at it a whole lot better than they do. Yeah. Oh, I contribute money to individuals who I know need help. I, and, and I do not give it to middlemen, and I certainly don't give it to any groups of uh, weepers and criers who want to hand it over to women who continue to pump out children like a human Xerox machine. Right. That's, that's exactly the way I feel, too. My wife does this thing with, with her work, too. And uh, we got it through our work, but um, I refuse to give a dollar mm-hmm. because I don't want my money to go to nothing like that because it just encourages people. Good for you. Hey, thanks, Tom. Blow me up. Here you go, Johnny. 1 800 5800 Tom. Here's our telephone number. This is Jason on the Tom Like You Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What up? Uh, not, uh, not just the ratings, Jason. I hope so. Um, just come move back to Brooklyn. I lived there a few years, and you can see it every day. It, this ain't going to stop. Um, we got too many people that their whole livelihood revolves around taking care of their kids, and they got nothing else to do. Uh-huh. Um, secondly, as far as Hispanics go, family is so huge that that's all they identify themselves with. Mm-hmm. Even as Americans, it's they're gonna. I don't know an answer to it. I don't think you're going to be able to stop this. Well, one thing you can do is not voluntarily contribute to it. That's what no, I'm telling people to do. Stop giving to charities that give to irresponsible people. Yeah, and what I did, what I would do in New York, fucking around, I'd see people that really look struggling. I'd give them the dollar. They'd be passed out with beer in their hand. I'd still give them money. Just I know they're struggling. But these middlemen guys are the ones making the money. No, this is... Yeah, well, I, don't, I also don't give money to people walking around on the street. And the reason I don't do that uh, is because uh, nine times out of ten, that money is used for drugs or alcohol. And uh, I don't feel like uh, handing money like that over. That's true, but people struggle. People struggle. How about take me out with a barn hit? Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Uh, this is John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it hanging? Uh, hanging right there, John. Well, that's sweet, dude. Let me tell you about the last time that I gave to a charity, which was about uh, three or four years ago. Uh, my father's a minister for a church, and we had a, a needy family come in one day, and uh, this was, this woman was pregnant. They had five kids. Her husband did manual labor in some kind of factory. I don't know what he did. But they had they didn't have any money. They were piss poor. Their kids dressed in rags, didn't have shoes. Uh, they drove like a 78 Nova that smoked and was all beat to hell. And our church, we collectively felt sorry for them. So we took up this big collection, saved up. I mean, we, we gave them about $2,000. Plus we gave them food to last at least a month. And then after we gave it to him, we never saw him again. But the next week, I was driving to work, and I saw that family all piled into a brand-new Camaro that they had used our money to go make a down payment for. Yikes. But their kids were still dressed in rags, and they were still dirty and nasty, but they were sporting a brand-new Camaro. So that was the last time that I ever gave to a charity or any kind of wealth or any welfare families. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, they just totally ruined it for me. Yeah. I, I had say I had put in about 150 of my own personal dollars yeah. into that. Yeah. See, I, I, I now can I, I give money to individuals who I meet or I know who need help. I help them, but I will not help any fat cat charities, and I will not give my money to any family that's having kids they can't afford to have. I'm not doing it, not supporting it, not giving money to any single mothers. Screw yeah, you. You've already gotten screwed. Sorry, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's, I mean, I got it. I, we all got the shaft. I didn't tell anybody in my church about it because then they probably would have stopped giving money to the people that actually do need it. Yeah. But, but we just got taken. Really. Uh, I think it's time for, uh, by the way, I think it's time for people who, who, who conduct these charitable collections 
uh, to start doing a little more homework on who's getting that money. I mean, how can you live with yourself if you know you just took this nice congregation of people for a lot of money? Well, you know what, John? It, it, you, you tell the people back at your congregation. I, I'm an atheist myself, but you tell the people in your congregation. They, there's a quote from the Bible that says, God helps those who help, them to, who help themselves. Mm -hmm. And if somebody is not helping themselves, they shouldn't be getting charity from your church or anybody. Yeah, exactly. But uh, thanks, Tom. Can you take me out tribal style? What, what kind of style? Tribal style. Oh, tri African tribal style. Of course I can. Here's our telephone number. You know, you know with all the charities out there, I'm amazed that uh, everybody's agreeing with me. Who's contributing to these charities? Who? Kelly on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom Likas. Kelly. How are you? Great. And I do care. Thank you. Listen, I, I, you know, interesting enough, I used to be kind of a bleeding heart on this. I used to even want to try to get my own family to contribute to some needy families and things until two of my own blood and my own family are complete uh, takers of these types of things now in their lives. And um, I, I really now have really changed my mind and attitude about the topic. Um, even as recently as last week, my father took my whole family on a cruise. And you'd think that uh, these two brothers of mine would actually be appreciative. Not only did they take the cruise, they didn't say thank you, but they also have two kids that are on assistance at school and other things. Mm -hmm. And I watched them on the cruise. And, you know, they were more than willing to buy from their own money a bottle of Don Perignon or whatever, drink and smoke themselves to oblivion on the cruise. But then they're the first people to go stand in line for free lunch. Mm -hmm. And it, it just really, really drives me crazy. Uh, it's amazing. And uh, so you're not contributing any more either. No, I'm not. And for years, I have have helped and tried to contribute. But, you know, the bottom line is that people don't want to help themselves. And whether it's this topic, drug abuse, anything, the bottom line is if they're not willing, you only enable them to contribute. And I'm not saying that there aren't women or even men out there that have had, un, you know, uh, unfortunate circumstances where, you know, truly I have given and would give. Even friends in my own life, if they, you know something tragic happened, I would help them. Mm -hmm. But this particular topic is so close to home with my two brothers, and as I sit back and watch it, it's the disease of America, not taking accountability for people's it, what what you have in your life, like your kids and your family, and you know, in your case, you're talking about people having multiple kids. It's just disgusting. I, I think you make great points, Kelly, and I thank you. It's Shannon. I'm the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. I have just a few pointers on this, these subjects. Um, you were, the one lady called in about saying $2,000 for, like, paying for child care. Those are daycare vouchers. Some people need them. These working class people, I, we were one of those working class people. I got married. My ex-husband had a heart attack of 36. His, his mother blamed that heart attack on me. So we decided to divorce because... The feeling just wasn't there no more. So I moved to Maryland. I met this guy. We've been together almost five years. We went from $60,000 a year down to nothing. We are scrounging to make our ends meet. He got hurt at work, broke his neck in two places. We have no money. I lost my engagement ring that he brought me. I lost my diamond tennis place that he brought me. I lost everything to make my kids have a nice Christmas. Mm -hmm. Those charities, I signed up for them charities. I had to stoop to that level. So like a beggar, you know how embarrassing that is going down there asking somebody for help? I'm sure it because, is. Because you have nothing. But we went from $60,000 a year to nothing. We're scrounging. I had to go ask for food stamps. I mean, was, they ask you so many personal questions. It's like, I don't even want your help. You people make me feel like garbage because those are my tax dollars. I work for that. I deserve a little bit of that help back. But, I mean, we like I said, we went from that kind of money to nothing. We have no money. My kids, Christmas. I don't think anybody who called in this hour, and certainly not myself, has said that people like you don't 
need, and deserve help. We're not talking about people like you. We are talking about people who have one kid, two kids, three kids, sometimes by two, three different fathers. And then they write these weepy stories to the newspaper. They, all these newspapers have these charitable funds this time of year. Oh, won't you help? Uh, Susie is a single mother of four, and it's so hard to make ends meet. You know what? We don't give a rat's ass about people like that. But somebody like you, if, if what you say is true, what you've described, you're exactly the kind of person who should get this kind of help. And, and that's who it's there for. And that, that's what food stamps are for, that's what welfare is for, and that's what charity should be for. But we went, I mean, he was, he's a master mechanic. We went from $60,000 a year. I, I know people in Hagerstown know who I am. I know they know who I am. We went from $60,000 a year to nothing. I had to ask for the help, mm-hmm. which I don't want to. I lost my engagement ring. I lost everything. We are, I, I pawned everything I could possibly pawn to make my ends meet to pay my rent. Mm-hmm. Which my rent is now down. They dropped my rent because I live in the projects. I had to move to the projects. I had a hundred and twenty thousand dollar house. We lost because we can't make our ends meet. Uh-huh. I mean, it, it just literally sucks. And you have these people that are out there having all these things by different dads. They're a hoe, and that's how I would say you're a hoe. My kids, I have two. My ex-husband has my thirteen-year-old, and I have my our eleven-year-old because she wanted to live with her dad. So. Go with your dad to kind of help me out because I'm struggling, but I got to get her stuff for Christmas. Mm-hmm. I completely understand, and I don't want you to get the wrong idea by what we're saying this hour. But these people who get daycare vouchers, uh, sorry, they they don't deserve it. That one lady called on about paying two thousand right. dollars or whatever a month for for child care. That's daycare vouchers. Someone like me, I'm trying to find a job. I'm out everywhere, every day looking for a job. My fiance can't work. His neck was broke in two places. Can't work. I have to go out and find a job. There's no money. We can't do it. I know. I mean, like I said, we're, we're struggling. I had to go ask for help. And I, it's just, it's embarrassing. And you have so many people who are out there doing that, asking for help, who don't. You know, I, I, as terrible as it is to be embarrassed, I'm thrilled that you're embarrassed. Because that indicates to me that you really need the help and would do anything you could to take care of yourself. That's the kind of person, as a taxpayer, I want to help. That's the kind of person who, if I gave money to a charity, that I want to get the help. I don't want 14-year-old girls with two kids by two different fathers getting the help. Where I live, I have two girls. The one, 17, has two kids. Wrong. I've done that. The other one, 16, and has a child. If my daughter comes home 15, 16 years old pregnant, one, I'm not going to turn my back on her, but two, she's going to take care of that kid. You go out, you get a job, you take care of that child, you lay there, you made the mistake, you do it. Shannon, I, all I can say is I, 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 I'm proud to have you as a listener, and I, I thank you for the call. Tom like it. one 800 800 My wife and I will be together forever. Oh, my God. Don't you think everybody who gets married says that? I don't know. I know. I, I said it four times. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, hi. Hi. Um, I had an experience where when I was in college, there was a charity where you could go and help clean up people's homes in the inner city, and it was called Christmas in April, so I signed up, and I went to clean people's homes. I was picking up trash. I was painting. I was doing everything, and you could see through the windows the teenagers who lived in the house were not helping, and it really turned me off, Mm -hmm. and so for several years, I just said, forget it, I'm not going to, you know, help anybody, I'm not going to do charities. And then I thought, you know, if you really do the math, most people um, do benefit from charities. But I think your point is the best in that you really should do your homework and find out through individual people 
who needs help. And, so and help the people who...